Good morning, church. Isn't it a good day to be in the Lord's house? We're gathering around the Lord's table today, as you can see. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. And as we do that, we're going to focus our thoughts and even our songs this morning on what Jesus did for us. As we celebrate that table, we celebrate what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary going there for our sins and that's why we're gathered this morning isn't it that's why we can call ourselves Christians because we've been born again and washed in the blood of the Lamb and that's what we're going to sing about as we begin this morning would you stand with us as we sing this old hymn nothing but the blood what can wash away my sin only the blood of Jesus
chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the Lord has promised good to us the Lord has promised good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion me as long as life endures my chains are this morning. Say amen. Amen. Let's be seated, please. Be seated. God's Amen. Amen. Well, I'm so glad that you're here. I want to give you some announcements right now. I typically don't do that, but I want to point it out because of uh, our Lord's Supper coming up after a while. Don't forget that this coming Saturday is Trunk or Treat. And so I want you to be a part of that. If you haven't brought your candy, you can do so this coming Wednesday. And uh, we want you to be a part of that. We'll be out here at 5 o'clock until 7. And we'll social distance. Ronnie's got us all set up really well. So it'll be a good experience for everyone. So uh, please be a part of that as well. Also, today is a baby shower for uh, Jenny and Chris Drennan. If you have a, uh, a gift that, and you can't stay for the shower, you can give that uh, to them in the uh, fellowship hall and they'll get that later on if you're not going to be able to stay for the shower. So I want to point that out as well. Back to the service. Isn't it great to be in God's house? I'm so glad that you're with us today. Let's have a word of prayer and continue in worship. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you allow us to be called yours. And Father, Father, today as we come together just to worship you, to experience you in this time of, uh, of song and of just being in your word and certainly celebrating uh, the Lord's Supper, I pray that you would be in our midst. Father, your Holy Spirit would allow us to focus clearly on what the Lord Jesus has done for us on the cross. And so, Father, I thank you today that you can come, uh, that we can come together and worship you freely. Thank you again for your love and your mercy. Father, most of all, we thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray. And amen. 
Each week when my wife and I draw, uh, drive in um, to, to church here, we drive through the countryside, and we see all of those beautiful fall colors. Uh, and they're right here, right here in the middle of where many of you live. And I know that you enjoy that too each fall. But you know, when I look at those colors, I just look at that and the, the landscape with the hills and uh, the, the oranges and the yellows and the reds and all of that, I just can't help but just thank God for being such a wonderful God. He made it all. He created it. And in His infinite creativity, He decided to give us something beautiful to look at in part of his world. And I think that this part of Tennessee is some of the most beautiful parts of the world. And uh, you're privileged to live here in the middle of that. But you know, there's something even greater that causes us to worship than just the beautiful landscapes that we see around us. And that is what Jesus did for us on the cross. Amen, church. What God did for us, it's so incredible what he did when he went and sent his son to Calvary. We sing this morning about how great, how great thou art, how great our God is. And we think about the things he's created and we think about redemption of our souls. So would you stand with us as we sing with all our hearts this morning, how great thou art. shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Thou art, then 
sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Oh Lord, we thank you. Our hearts just before you just want to burst into song because of what you have done for us. The fact that you have saved us and the fact that you haven't left us as orphans. But Lord, you're coming back one day. We're looking. We're looking at the eastern skies. And we know that our redemption draws near. Thank you for all of these wonders that we get to behold of you through your creation and your redemption. We love you this morning, Lord, and we thank you for the cross as we gather around your table today. We are just reminded the great sacrifice that you've made for us. Lord, we love you and we praise you in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Would you be seated? Paul wrote to the Colossians in chapter two, he says, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. That's good news. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. If you know this next song, we invite you just to stay seated and sing it along with me. If not, just listen to these words and let them minister to you as we draw our hearts and our minds to the cross. Bow down. 
cross, at the cross I surrender my life. I owe all of you. I'm in awe of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe Thank you all for being here again. If you have your copy of God's Word, we'll be looking in John chapter 3. John chapter 3, probably the most familiar uh, passage in all of Scripture. Uh, John three sixteen today, we'll be talking about what Jesus did on the cross as we prepare to engage and celebrate the Lord's uh, Supper. As I was studying this, this uh, passage this week, I came across a story about a psychiatrist's office. He had a sign in the outer office when you walked into the waiting room and it said, All amnesia patients must pay in advance. He must not have had very much confidence in his ability to help those amnesia patients remember even to pay their bill as they walked out. But you know what? In Scripture, we are reminded time and time and time again to remember certain things, aren't we? We're to uh, never forget the blessings of God. We're never to forget the benefits of being a child of God. We're never to forget the instructions of God. Certainly, we're to, to remember the cross. In fact, and the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. That's why we uh, celebrate the Lord's uh, table today. So I want to invite us all to stand in honor of the Lord's Word, and I'm going to ask us to do something a little differently today. Instead of reading the Lord's Word today, I want us to quote this famous and popular Scripture today. So you may have, it may have memorized it in a different translation than what we have on the, scripture, or on the board today. So please, in the Scripture translation that you have memorized this in, let's read this together or quote this together. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes believes in Him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for the truth of Your Word. We thank You that You can sum up the, the Gospel in one verse. And Father, we thank You that it is so simple that even a child can understand and believe. So Father, we are without excuse. Those of us who have heard us and not made a decision to follow Christ, we have no excuse. We can't just stand before You and claim ignorance because we know now that the Lord Jesus came and died for us so that we can have life abundant in Him. And so Father, I pray today as as we go through uh, this sermon, as we study your word, as we celebrate uh, the Lord's table, that you would, Father, come and impart to us through your Holy Spirit the truth of your word and help us to make the appropriate uh, differences in our lives so that we can be your people. Thank you again for your love and your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. You can follow along in the bulletin outline on the back if you so choose. But I want to just say that I was in a, a store the other day, a department store the other day, walked in, and they already had all their Christmas decorations out. You know, it seems like it's getting earlier and earlier and earlier. They bypass Halloween, bypass Thanksgiving, go straight for Christmas. And it's interesting that they had the Christmas decorations out, especially since the political correct crowd would say that we can't say Merry Christmas anymore. We can't say Merry Christmas anymore. We have to say Happy Holidays. But even that crowd that says that we must say Happy Holidays forgets that the word holiday means Holy Day. 
And it is, in fact, a holy day, isn't it? Christmas is a holy day. We forget a lot of things, don't we? We forget anniversaries. We forget birthdays. We forget Valentine's Day. We forget appointments of various kinds. I remember one time when I was still teaching at the seminary, I was a member of a, a large church uh, down the street from us, and we had been asked to go, and, uh, and after their Sunday morning session, they were going to have some training sessions for some of their uh, workers in, in various classes, and they asked me to come and teach one of those sessions. And so I agreed to do so. I, it was very common. I did a lot of, of that kind of thing with other churches, and they asked me to do it there in my own church. Of course, I'm going to go and teach the class. And so I remembered that I was supposed to teach that when we were at, at lunch after we had left church and gone to uh, the restaurant. I remembered, oh no, I was supposed to go teach that class. We forget things, don't we? We forget things along the way. But there are some things that we can never forget. We can never forget the truth that Jesus, the incarnate Son of God, was crucified on a cross 2,000 years ago. That He came and took on the sins of the world for you and for me. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. And now He sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and for me. We can never forget this. And there's three things that I want to point out today. That what Jesus did on the cross, there's three things that I want to emphasize today that will lead us as we engage in the Lord's table and remember the sacrifice that the Lord made. First of all, I want to point out that Jesus died on the cross because of the sin of humanity. The sin of humanity. Our scripture says today that He came so that we should not perish, that we should not die. And I want to remind us all that sin always leads to death. Sin always leads to death. You say, well, no, i got to pass on that. I can do that. I'm having a big time. Sin always leads to death. Paul says, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, in this way death spread to all people, because all have sinned. All have sinned. We all have sinned, and sin leads to death. He says that, that sin entered the world through Adam, through one man, and that death through sin, and then everyone has sinned, we all die. Sin always leads to death. But God proves His own love for us that while well, we were still sinners, what happened? Christ died for us. Our sin created the opportunity for Jesus to come and die for us. Sin leads to death. Jesus died for us. Some folks won't believe that. Some folks say that I haven't sinned. There's no way you can say that I'm a bad person. I'm a good person. I don't, I don't sin. I, you know, we haven't missed the mark. We're going to make up all kinds of reasons for that not to be the case. They don't want to hear the truth. We'll make up strange rationales. We'll make up various types of philosophies to explain it away. We'll just ignore it and act like it's not even happening. We'll say that what you're saying is true is not true. Is that not the world today? Upside down versions of the truth. This isn't really happening. I'm not a bad person. I'm not a simple person. We'll just ignore it and pretend that it goes away. We'll try to pretend that it's not true. I read an interview of a race car driver who uh, was very successful in the Indy 500. And he said, uh, when he was talking about the drivers uh, who had been killed in that, on that racetrack, he said, you know, we don't uh, acknowledge that they were ever killed. We, we don't act like it ever happened. We don't watch the films of the crash. In fact, when they go out and, and, and someone has a crash and they uh, are, are, are killed, uh, right after the event, a crew comes out and paints the wall where the crash occurred. If you go into the museum, I don't know if you've ever been there or not, I've been, uh, been there. You go into the museum of the, of the Indy 500, it's in the inside of the oval. There's no plaques acknowledging that anybody died there. There's no uh, memorials of any kind. Over 40 people have crashed and died on that racetrack. And not one of them have been pronounced dead on that property. We ignore it. We pretend that it's not happening. We do that with our sin, don't we? We act like that we're not sinful, and that's not happening. But Scripture says all have sinned. We all have sinned. The cross of Christ reveals that truth, that humanity is sinful and without hope without Jesus. You see, there's nothing that we can do without Jesus. He's the only reason, that, uh, or only hope that we have for a life. Uh, without Him, we are dying. Jesus died on the cross for one reason, and that's because we are sinful people. You know, as we come to the Lord's table today, we need to keep in mind that without Jesus, we have no hope. We have no hope without Jesus. And He comes and He dies for us. 
Sin caused His death. His love, He gave Himself for us so that we would not have to experience that death. He came because of His love for us and He died on that cruel cross. So Jesus died on the cross because of the sins of humanity, but the second thing I want to point out is that His death on the cross provides new life for all who believe in Him. Not only does, it, does sin create death, but Jesus gives life. He gives life. Scripture says, whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Eternal life. Paul says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Is that sin causes death. As we've pointed out, sin leads to death. The wages of sin. You earn death. That's the wages. But the gift, you didn't earn it. The gift of God is what? Eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus willingly suffered for your sin and for mine. What? To provide the redemption that we could not provide for ourselves. He gave us what we could not earn. We earned death, but He gives us eternal life. Even while Jesus was on the cross, while He was in the midst of all the scorn, in the midst of the persecution, in the midst of the blasphemy, He pleaded on the, on, to the Father on behalf of His murderers. He said, Lord, please forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. We deserve that death because we're sinful. But Jesus took our place. He took our place. We need to remember that as we celebrate today the Lord's Supper, that He gave Himself for us. He gave us a life when we were heading toward death. There's a man by the name of John Staples. And he was walking down uh, Washington, D.C. street when he was 19 years old uh, with his father. And this man walks up to him, a representative of Abraham Lincoln, and walks up to him and, and asks him, would you be willing to, uh, to represent Abraham Lincoln as, uh, in the war? You see, back then, in the Civil War, you could, a person could pay another person to go and fight in, on their behalf, in their place, in their stead. And he asked this young man, would you uh, be willing to go risk your life as a representative for Abraham Lincoln? Even though Abraham Lincoln was exempt from the draft, he wanted someone to go represent him. And the man agreed to it. And for his trouble of, of uh, risking his life, he was paid $560. And he, uh, he was fortunate in surviving the war. Uh, he went to war and he, he, he went in Lincoln's place. But folks, Jesus took our place. He died on the cross because of our sins. He, he came because, to give us life, but He didn't go uh, to, to, uh, take our place because of money, or He didn't do it for fame or fortune or for reputation or for accolades. He did it because He loved us. He did it because He loved us. We were headed to death, and He came in and gave us life. Gave us life. Jesus died on the cross in our place because of His love. And that brings me to my third point, is that Jesus' death on the cross showed us God's love. He shows us God's love. The Scripture today begins with, For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Look around this world. Is there anything lovely about it? But yet, God loved us to the extent that He sent His Son to die. How much do you love others? How much do I love others? I wonder that sometimes. How much do you love your family, your spouse, your children, your community, your church, your co-workers, the people you're driving down the road with? How much do you actually love them? You see, Jesus came and He gave Himself because of His love. For God so loved the world. Folks, we can't say anymore that no one cares about us. We want, to, we want to cry that sad song, no one cares about me, but it's not true. Jesus came to show God's love. He came because God loves you. You may be familiar with the painting called The Three Crosses. It's by Rembrandt. And if you look at this picture, um, there are three crosses. Uh, Jesus is in the middle and the two thieves on either side. But you're immediately going to be drawn to the, to the uh, centerpiece of Christ being murdered on the cross. 
But after a while, you'll look down and you'll see all the faces of the, of the people at the, at the execution there. Some are going to be uh, looking like jeering at Christ, uh, being, being blasphemous and, and, and cursing the Lord as He dies on the cross. Others are going to be looking in horror at the, uh, the travesty of justice that's taking place. But if you look over in the side, in the shadows, there's a, there's a little man uh, standing in the shadows there. And it's Rembrandt himself looking on at the Lord dying on the cross because he knew that it was his sin that helped nail Jesus to the cross. You see, our sin put Jesus on that cross. Our sin is the reason that Jesus died on the cross. He died on that cross because He loves us. He died because we were headed to death. He came to give us new life and He came to show us God's love. He came to show us God's love. There was a man who had gone on vacation with his family. He visited uh, uh, this church. And while he was there, the pastor got up and said, Jesus didn't really die at Calvary. He said that Jesus was merely, uh, was merely swooning and he just he kind of got injured on the cross. His disciples came in and, and, uh, and, and returned him to health and he went on his merry way. Well, it confused this young, this young man. He went back home to his pastor and walked up to him and said, Sir, this is what I was told. This is never, I've never heard anything like this. What do you think about this? This man said that Jesus did not die on the cross. And his pastor looked at him and said, You know what? Go ask this other pastor if, if he could be beaten with a cat of nine tails 39 times. And then be hung on a cross in the blazing sun for six hours. And then see if he could, uh, could uh, have a spear thrust through his side where it punctured both his lungs and his heart. And then be put in uh, a sealed tomb for two days. After that, do you think this man could be nursed back to health? You see, folks, I want you to know that we need to remember the cost that Jesus endured for us. You see, when we come here to this table, we have to remember what Jesus has done for us. Jesus died. Jesus rose. He is Lord. He is alive. He will come again one day. Those of us who are in Christ, we'll see Him in glory and we will bow at His feet and worship Him. My dear friends, do you believe? Do you believe that? Do you remember who Jesus is? The cost that He has paid for us. Have you given your life to Him? There was, a, there was an agnostic. An agnostic is someone who says, I don't know if there's a God or not. And this agnostic was talking to this little girl and he said, there are so many saviors in this world. And the little girl said, then you know what? You need to believe in the one who died and rose again. She believed and she remembered Jesus. Do you remember Jesus? Do you remember Jesus? He died on the cross because of our sin. Jesus' death on the cross gives us new life. And he shows us the love of Christ by coming and doing so. Do you believe? He's calling you. Did you know that? He's calling you. Will you answer? As we enter this time of invitation, let's have a word of prayer, and I want us to do business with God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the work that the Lord Jesus has done on the cross. Father, I pray in these moments of decision that your people would be faithful to you. And Father, I pray that if there's one here that does not know you, that has thought, oh, I'll get around to it one day. I'll, I'll come and make a decision for Christ one day. That today would be the day of salvation because we have not been promised another breath in our lung. We have not been promised another day of our life. So Father, I pray that today, today will be the day of salvation. Father, I pray that today will be the day of decision where your people come and do business with you. Maybe we're not living our life according to the ways that you want us to. We're not remembering you in our daily walk. Father, thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. But thank you for the rescue that you have provided and the life that we have in him. Father, as your people are praying, I pray that we would do business with you today. In Jesus' name, amen.